God damn it. My hubris got me again. I didn't watch Promise Neverland when it first came out. I thought it was a kid's show. It's not. <laughs> it looks so delicious. Human flesh is definitely the tastiest. No. This orphanage-based anime really had me going there for a little bit. You see, 15 minutes in, that's basically when I started to realize, wow, they aren't screwing around. Before that, it was pretty much me thinking, wow, this mama character's got it going on. I mean, look at her curves. They remind me of bowling balls. She's 100% bad bitch, man. Those hypnotizing eyes make me want to be her slave. Well, turns out she's evil and wants to help feed children to demons. These three with full marks are to be prepared for plucking. Yes, sir, I understand. Wow, that is delicious. Finally, some good fucking food. It's a quirk. You might be thinking, cool, kids getting eaten. But why should I care? Well, other than being a horror anime, which they aren't very abundant, The Promised Neverland is interesting from top to bottom, including the three main characters. Ray, Emma, and Norman. They're all great. Norman is an old soul, the wise sort of young kid who's aged way beyond his years. Good morning, friends. <laughs> Ray is a bit of a dick. Stone Cold, he's the realest of the group. And Emma is just the cutest young gal, which is great because it really feels like the show is seen through her eyes more than the other two. These three in a whole orphanage filled with younger kids have been raised by Isabella, the aforementioned Verish Mexigal. Shame! She's a formidable and smart antagonist. Also, it appears she's been juiced up with a whole lot of steroids. I'm not sure I should show you why I know that. <gasps> she's sinister and dangerous as all hell, but I wouldn't exactly say she's scary. But I can point you to something that is... Oh dear God. Watch! You'll see! I'll drag you down, you witch! Ah! I will be mom here. The writers sure poured a whole lot of nut job into this lady. Even though she's a relatively minor character, she will be keeping me up at night for the next four years, so I got that to look forward to. Run and hide! <laughs> but anyway, that's enough about the characters. Having one of the greatest jazzy intros of all time aside, Neverland might also be the goat of having a really twisty ass plotline. I mean, it takes the whole first episode until you're like, whoa, this is a conspiracy. Emma and Norman find out and they're like, oh my God, they're feeding kids to demons. They deliberate on whether or not they should tell Ray. I mean, they have been living together for 13 years. Tell you what, I'll talk to Ray myself. Why don't you head back to the house for now? Why not now? <laughs> Ray! So they tell Ray and his response amounts to, this concerns me. Mom is the enemy? This is bad. He catches on fast! Astute observation. He does catch on fast. Or does he? You see, it turns out, Ray knew about it the whole time. Da, da, da. How does he know, you may ask? Well... He's been working with a certain smexy lady. She seems to hold him in particularly high regard for some reason. That reason being, Isabella, their mama, is his mother. That's up. I felt like I was getting beat up by Mike frickin' Tyson with how many knockout surprises this show has. I wanna eat his children, praise be to Allah. Now, speaking of surprises, let's talk about the second season. Now we're ready to destroy their entire species. I'm sorry, Emma. Um, what? So the first season ends with Isabella letting her hair down, nice touch, after she totally screws up and lets all the children leave. Not sure how she doesn't get fired, but whatever. Ending a season is usually a conundrum for most anime. On one hand, if your original story is technically completed, where are you gonna go with that? And Promise Neverland certainly does complete its first story arc, which is all the kids escaping. Where in the hell is it gonna go now, I wondered. In this scenario, there are usually two options. Try to top the first season with a similar storyline, or do something completely different. And Neverland does the latter. <laughs> huh. Huh. 
we discover that the demons essentially have the same sort of world setup as humans do. They're just demons, which poses some interesting questions. You thought demons, mother, and being eaten alive was uh, a bit spooky? Check out Genocidal Norman. Separated from Ray and Emma towards the end of the first season, Norman, uh, he takes a pretty drastic stance on what to do about the whole demon thing. We'll make the demons extinct. We'll end this Neverland. And together, we'll make this demon world our paradise. I mean, these demons must have kids too, so let's kill all of them. Cool. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Laughing at my own jokes aside, Ray and Emma take a totally different stance. They're, they're thinking diplomacy, which is is wimp, wimp shit, but okay, makes it interesting. What's even better is we can clearly understand both viewpoints. Emma understands that a lot of the demons have nothing to do with the child killing, but Norman, on the other hand, well, he went through some shit, won't get into that. Yeah, if I was him, I'd be like, I'm killing every single one of these bastards. I don't give a shit. I might just have to agree with Emma, though. We did get to meet a really cute demon girl in the woods. So, I mean, that's, that's really convincing if you ask me. In conclusion, the second season really is up to par with the first, and that's incredibly impressive because they're both vastly different. Finally, I think it's time we talk about the ending. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, let me let me set it up for you. <sighs> the kids are on their final way to assault the demon headquarters. In Dear God, it appears the demons got the jump on him and they know everything about it. Here they come. Now. Where are they? Check the area. They might have jumped. <laughs> Same. It's a decoy. It brings it all the way back to the twistiness of the original season, and it is one hell of a ride. After the crew completely humiliate the bumbling idiot demons, Mama shows up packing an MP5 with all her girlfriends, which is scary as hell, might I add, it's also sexy. Sam! So essentially this guy is the big bad evil doer, but I don't really remember anything about him, so let's just call him Homewrecker because he's standing next to Mama. The kids are trapped, so they're forced to listen to whatever evil villainous things are coming out of Homewrecker's mouth, but I don't remember those either. What comes next is the most obvious twist they could have gone with, but it's still awesome, so... Here you go. Playtime is over. Peter, drop your weapons and stand back. You really should listen to your mother, kids. Young lady, all you were meant to be is food. Well, I don't give a damn what you say! <laughs> now that's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that the hype might have been a little too much, but it was awesome to see Isabella finally switch sides. Because, you know, I loved her the whole time. I knew she was gonna be good. It was it was just gonna happen. I knew it absolutely hundred percent. Homewrecker is so goddamn humiliated, as he should be, that he straight up offs himself, so that fixes that. This show is great from start to finish. Well, I suppose almost. For a meticulously crafted and intelligent show, having an ending that is essentially, yeah, we won, we're great, all right, bye. I mean, it's just, it leaves a sour taste in your mouth, and that's essentially what Neverland does. Uh, there's nothing particularly bad about the ending, it's just average. The last few minutes of the show are actually just a montage of still images that give us a, somewhat of an idea of what actually happens after all the kids are rescued. It would have been great to see all this stuff, but even if we don't, that's all right. That being said, I think it's time to wrap this video up. I applaud you for watching. It was a blast to make. I've been your American Otaku. This is my co-host, Zero Two. And go watch Neverland, damn it.